Reinhard Heydrich, the man who possessed an iron heart. You must be aware of the tragedy known as the Holocaust, perpetrated by the Nazis. Adolf Hitler is the most infamous character who led it for a long time. The Holocaust, as you know, is the most dangerous genocide to target the Jewish population in the whole of Europe during the early days of the Second World War. Reinhard Heydrich was one of the highly decorated and ranking police officers of the Nazis during the time, and he was involved in many brutal executions. He was so fierce and dangerous that Hitler himself named him the Man with the Iron Heart. The name was justified since he was considered the perfect replacement for Adolf Hitler. His other nickname was the Butcher of Prague. There were multiple reasons behind these names, and we are going to deep dive into his life and his brutality during his time with the Nazis. During World War II, he was the chief of the Reich Security Main Office, the SS and police body most directly involved in carrying out the Nazi plot to exterminate European Jews. Reinhard Heydrich was a crucial figure in developing the final solution. He was responsible for several crimes, such as arresting people without any explanation or warrant and killing them in the concentration camps. He became a new face of inhumanity. But that isn't all. Instead, he was responsible for the Einsatzgruppen, the special task force that followed the German army and killed over 2 million people, including 1.3 million Jews, through mass shootings and gassing. Reinhard Heydrich, the police officer and one of the most horrific German Nazi SS officers, was born in Halle Adesala, a German region of Saxony, on 7th of March 1904. Bruno Heydrich, his father, was a famous opera singer at that time and founded the Halle Conservatory of Music, Theater and Teaching, where his mother used to teach piano. Having a musical family background, he enjoyed playing the violin and dazzled listeners with his musical ability. He attended Reform Gymnasium and excelled in his academics, particularly science. Additionally, he was an excellent athlete and swimmer. However, he was bashful and he was frequently teased because of his high-pitched voice by his friends. But as time passed, it seemed that he only loved one type of music, the music of death. No one knew at the time that this simple violin player boy would set examples of brutality and be a face of fear. His father was a German nationalist who nurtured patriotic values in his three children but refused to join any political party until after World War I. The Heydrich family was conservative. As a child, he competed in fake fencing matches with his younger brother Heinz. When World War I was about to end, Germany faced defeat after defeat and eventually they lost. After World War I, Heydrich's hometown of Halle saw civic unrest when he was 15 years old. He subsequently joined Merkur's Volunteer Rifles and became a member of the group that guarded private property. Little is known about his participation, but the events had an indelible effect on him. They were a political awakening for him. He became a member of the anti-Semitic Deutsch Volkischer Schutz und Trutzbund. Reinhard Heydrich entered the German Navy as a naval cadet in 1922. He was promoted to senior midshipman in 1924 and served as a signals officer on a battleship in 1926. Finally, he was promoted to sub-lieutenant in 1928. These were some quick promotions for him and it was not palpable for him and the seeds of arrogance and ambition were planted from there on. His dark times began when he mixed his professional life with his desires. He and Lena von Osten were romantically linked back then and announced their engagement. Heydrich was accused of behavior unbecoming an officer and a gentleman in early 1931 for breach of promise, having been promised to marry another lady he had known for six months before the Lena von Osten engagement. They married in December 1931. In the same year, he was released from the Navy, and on June 1st, he joined the Nazi party in Hamburg, and six months later, he joined the SS, and his career took a huge turn. Heinrich Himmler established the SS counterintelligence branch in 1931. Himmler agreed to interview Heydrich at the suggestion of his associate, Karl von Eberstein, who was Lena's friend, but canceled their meeting at the last minute. Unfortunately, Lena was not smart enough. She ignored this warning and packed Heydrich's bag before sending him to Munich. 
Eberstein visited Heydrich at the train station and drove him to Himmler's office. Himmler requested that Heydrich submit his ideas for establishing an SS intelligence agency. Himmler was so taken with Heydrich that he recruited him right away. Heydrich took on his new role as the chief of the new IC service on August 1, 1931. He established himself at the Brown House, the Nazi party's headquarters in Munich. By October, he had found a network of spies and informers to gather intelligence and gain material for use as blackmail to achieve his goals. Reinhardt prepared a list of people who should be killed and executed in the direction of Hitler and fully succeeded in that role. By that time, he was appointed as the chief of the Gestapo, a secret and personal police of Nazis, and with that police, he executed mass killings and arrests. Hitler was impressed by his strategies and executions because Heydrich killed more than 200 people in just two days. He became one of Germany's two most influential personalities, Hitler being the first one, of course. He had gained a lot of negative publicity for vanishing suspected people without leaving any traces at any cost. Gestapo law of 1936 granted police the authority to operate extra-legally, allowing him to detain people without court hearings. As a result, people were arrested without probable cause, imprisoned in concentration camps, or killed. In 1941, he and his SD carried out the Night and Fog mandate, which required those threatening German security to be imprisoned while it was dark and foggy. This directive resulted in the disappearance of around 7,000 persons. He was named Deputy Reich Protector of the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia the following year. His mission was to undermine and put down anti-German strikes. He began his control in Prague by intimidating the populace. During his reign, he was personally responsible for the arrests and killings of thousands of individuals. Reinhard Heydrich gained the nickname the Butcher of Prague for his reign of terror in Prague. Within three days of his arrival, he killed 92 individuals. In addition, he blocked all channels through which Czechs may exhibit their culture. Approximately 5,000 individuals were arrested, and many more were detained in concentration camps. With his powers and designations awarded by the Nazi government, he swept through all Czech groups, the military and the intelligentsia, in March 1942, effectively paralyzing the Czech resistance. Moreover, Heydrich turned the Gestapo into a tool of terror. It had the authority to arrest any person suspected of committing a crime, and the definition of the crime was up to him. His popularity became his enemy, since he was famous in everyone's eyes, and he had no idea that the British army and Czechoslovak government in exile were working together in London and preparing to assassinate him, and training two of their best operatives to do it. His story ended when Hitler himself started to dislike him because of excessive fame, which was more than he already had. In the last few days, in many of his speeches, Hitler also described Heydrich as a careless, stupid and idiotic person who didn't know what he was doing. Of course, Heydrich didn't respond, but everyone knew that he was deeply hurt and upset because Hitler was like a mentor and a paragon to him since he joined the Nazi party and the SS. Heydrich planned to see Hitler in Berlin on May 27, 1942. Heydrich would have had to pass through a portion where the Dresden-Prague route joins with the road to the Troja Bridge from his house to the airport. The intersection in the Prague district of Liebe was ideal for the attack since drivers had to slow down for a hairpin turn. One of the spies took aim with a Sten submachine gun pistol as Heydrich's automobile slowed, but it jammed and failed to shoot. Instead of speeding away, Heydrich instructed his chauffeur, Klein, to come to a halt and approach him. The other agent, who had gone unnoticed by Heydrich or Klein, hurled a modified anti-tank mine at the automobile as it came to a halt, causing it to collide with the back wheel. The explosion blasted through the right rear fender, injuring Heydrich and causing significant injury to his left side with metal pieces and upholstery fibers. He battled the attackers, but was severely injured. He was laying on his stomach in the back of the van and driven to Bolovka Hospital's emergency room. Despite a fever, Heydrich's treatment looked to be on track. Theodor Morel, Hitler's personal doctor, advised using the new antibacterial medicine. But Gebhardt believed Heydrich would recover and refused the offer. Instead, he fell into a coma and died on June 4, 1942. On the other hand, Hitler blamed Heydrich for his own death due to his recklessness. His wife Lina was not so concerned about his death but more about the pension. 
Lina ultimately received a pension after a series of legal proceedings in 1956 and 1959 following Heydrich's death. However, because Heydrich participated in the Holocaust, the government first refused to pay the pension. Lina then wrote a memoir called Living with a War Criminal, which got quite famous after publishing in 1976. Then she got remarried, had children and died in 1985. His life had a lot of ups and downs, but one always has options in life. And Reinhard Heydrich chose a path that meant that his fate was sealed the day he joined a group of monsters, the Nazis. Being such a decorated and respected army officer at that time, more people used to hate him than people who loved him. The number of people he killed, arrested and executed was just beyond imagination. And his duty was to maintain the fear and threat of Hitler and the Nazi government, proving that he was the best at that. His story holds a message, which proves that even though he dedicated his whole life to Hitler and the Nazi government, during his funeral Hitler said that what happened to him was entirely his fault and his acts of driving without any security were a stupid act for any militarian and that he deserved that kind of death.